Let's go. Marco. 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 Do you like me? <laughs> Let's see if this showed up at the right moment or if I was early. I didn't do the intro thing this time. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Let's start it again, just in case. What up, Stitch with Robin? Got the babies in bed. What up, Jay, Lee Tries, Kilakina, Amanda, Gabby, Beyond, Jimmy, Rob Ross, Alicia, Marco being always stupid, yeah? Always being stupid, yeah? Alley Cat, Alex FPV, Wagwan, Beyond. Uh, will we get the Texan Peter show? Will they finally discuss Marco's speech at the FTC? Find out who killed J Junior JFK uh, tonight at 8. What up, everyone? Connor, Miss Amanda, Sora Gaming, Dominic. Speaking of Dominic. Thanks, Marco. Shout out to Dominic. Giselle. Aristotle. Mary. Sam Stark. What up? Lindy. What's up, you guys? How are you doing? Jared. Jaina. All right, well, we're here. Sila Jane, Sir Rocco, Miss Amanda, we're here, we're here, we're here. All right, so thumbs up the stream, obviously, if you're here. Thumbs up the team. You know the drill. I didn't do the intro on this one, so we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, Precision Beats, what up? Donation link is in the chat if you want to support. Patreon is in the description. Merch is in the description. You can uh, click the money icon on the chat if you want to become a member or gift memberships to other people. Got a lot of stuff coming, been working tirelessly on the big one so that's coming and uh yeah what up anna marie beyond the jr reference i'm too old for marco mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay i don't know who jr is what up eliza all right this is the the second time that eliza was on building fortunes radio and hopefully the last time, because there's just something about the magic of the three of us, no offense, Eliza, of me, Scott, and Peter doing our thing. You know, it's almost tradition at this point. They've been going now almost three years straight consistently talking about me, my goons, my family uh, in negative ways. And I've sort of, in a weird way, um, developed a soft spot in my heart for Scott and Peter. Aww. I know. So looking forward to that. Let's get right into it. This is Losing Fortunes Radio. This episode, here, let me refresh it because it just ended, so the replay still might be uh, wonky. Let me just refresh and make sure. Looks like it should work. It's called Eliza Returns with Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles on MLM and Addiction. I wasn't going to react to this episode tonight because I thought it would be the same as last time. But you guys assured me in the Discord that I would not be disappointed and I'm taking your word for it. Enpaz personally says that I won't be disappointed. So, you know, Enpaz is an OG goon. He's been here since not even the beginning. He's been here since before the beginning. What do I mean by that? Well, before I had my own YouTube channel, I was just a guest on my friend Philip's YouTube channel where Enpaz was, he was in there sturdy consistently. And uh, I started my own channel and we, you know, we poached him from one cult to, an, uh, to another. So, and he's been supporting ever since uh, 2019. So, and Paz says it, he doesn't miss. I'll believe him. I'll trust him. So, let us hit play and see what's going on. Click thumbs up on the stream. If you're watching the replay of this, please like the video. Helps a lot, blah, blah, blah. Thumbs up the team. All right, let's go. Let's check it out and get our bingo sheet open. Here we go. Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check Marco. us out at buildingfortunesradio.com, along with our marketing Marco. partners. We're here to help our PM marketing, network lead Marco. customers, build like their me? business, <laughs> and make the world a better place. <laughs> at Building Fortunes, we know how to get the bag to you <laughs> and the people important to you. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Now on to our show Marco. with your host, Peter Mingle. Hello, everyone. Peter Ringles here. You're listening to us on Building Fortunes Radio. It's www.buildingfortunesradio.com. It's a Saturday night. It's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. on the Central Side. And we do a radio show. This is actually Scott Johnson's radio show. We do every Saturday at this time. And almost every Saturday, with rare exceptions, we do it live. And so Question for Beyond in the chat. 
is Peter giving a recap of Building Fortunes Radio's history? Is is that part of is that one of the randomized bingo options? It has to be, right? All right, what up, Michael Milner? Don't fall asleep while Scott's talking. Yeah, please don't. Here we go. Let's let's check it. All right. Marco, yeah, you like those? During the intro, they're good. Here we go. Let's check it. Sometimes we do the radio show ourselves, meaning Scott and I. We talk about different things. And sometimes we have a guest. And today we have a continued guest. I'm going to let Scott do the full introduction. But for those people that are new, I always like to give you a little bit of the background because you're new. Jesus. So a long time ago, I started building uh, relative to the founding, I guess you could call it, in the MLM thinking. Um, but we've been doing a lot of shows. And this is a great guest that we had last week. And I'm glad she came back. And I hope that all the other guests um, that are afraid to come on the show will come on the show in the future because there's not too much you can do to somebody over a phone line. You know, <laughs> it's pretty harmless. Um, all you have to do is hang up if you don't like it. So it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal in people's minds that are just, I guess, afraid all the time. Um, but anyway, uh, getting back to the introduction, we normally talk about, MLMs a little bit, and like you said, I'm pro MLM if it's done right. I'm anti MLM if it's done wrong, and that often puts me in a place where both the anti MLM people don't like me and the pro MLM people don't like me. Um, so let's talk about doing it right because it's important to define what we mean by that. So doing it right means a couple of things. One of those is you have adequate retail sales to show that there's free market demand for the products. If you don't have that, then you have overpriced products, which is the same thing as a chain letter, a uh, airplane game, the gifting scheme. Those are all non-product based MLMs, um, no more price. But on top of that, because it's into his head, for him to understand we go. MLMs are really just pyramid schemes. Um, but when you have overpriced products, every product that's purchased by the distributors, if it's mostly by the distributors, then that's a combination of a legitimate purchase, like you could find a similar product at a similar price. But on top of that, because the products are normally overpriced, you have the same exact dynamic as you have with all those other things I mentioned that are product less. Um, and, and that's the main thing about the importance of retail sales. And I know that, you know, Marco rolls his eyes, oh, retail sales, tool scams. But that is the fundamental problem. Okay, then name one, Scott, where it's done right. The hypothetical that you're describing, I sort of talked about yesterday on the stream when we looked at the FTC's definition of what a legitimate MLM is, where they're making retail sales. I agree with you, Scott. Wrong button. I agree with you, Scott. Retail sales, lack of retail sales is sort of the heart of the real problem. You know, in terms of the bi in terms of it being a business model, aside from that, there's many problems with it being a cult and whatever else, but yeah, dude, name me one that has done it right historically, right? There have been hundreds of MLMs. Surely one of them has to have done it right. When you don't have retail sales is you have an illegal pyramid. And, um, you know, we've said this many times. Marco has probably heard it many times, but he's always stupid, so it might take another... What up, Dave Vaughn? The way Scott says his and Marco knows it's about him, right? ...or 20 or 30 times to beat this into his head for him to understand, number one, the definition of an illegal pyramid, which is the lack of retail sales. And we're talking retail sales being sales to customers who are not part of the MLM compensation plan. They're real customers. They're not downline distributors. So it's important to make that distinction. Because By the way, I'm going to hit this one called Scott gets caught in an obvious lie. The lie being that he says he's anti-MLM, but the truth is he's really not. There's a lot of people offhandedly say, well, the distributors are the customers. And unless you're thinking about this properly, you can get caught up in that illogic and, and nod your head but you're wrong <laughs> because because distributors are not customers they are distributors and nope. it's okay for them to consume the products in fact it's okay for them to be uh compensated for consuming the products 
but if and only it's okay for them to be compensated for consuming the products okay so internal consumption is okay which would make it a pyramid scheme which is what they all do so internal consumption in your eyes scott can be okay and yet the problem in your eyes is that there's a lack of retail sales so which is it you realize the retail customers if like you say it's okay for the distributors to consume the product well if they're the end consumer then they are the retail customer. So you sort of talk yourself in this circular logic that you contradict yourself. Either there's a lack of retail sales, which if the distributors are the customers, that is a lack of retail sales. It's just the people in a closed loop consuming it. Either it's a lack of retail sales and that's the problem, or it's okay for the consumers to Sorry, it's okay for the distributors to consume the product, in which case they would be the customer. So figure it out. Yes, there are retail sales to go along with it. In fact, the FTC tried to make that argument in one of the companies that they sued um, several years ago, and I can't remember the company offhand, but they said, Judge, we don't think that any compensation should be paid for the distributor there's purchasing products only customers Earn lounge yep Earn lounge oh shit i didn't uh i'm not wearing my losing fortunes radio t today but you can get that on alwaysmarkomerch.com i'm wearing the anti pyramid one today so holla at your boy burn lounge and the judge said nope it's okay um but the judge also made the point it's important to have customers and so we know that when burn L- burn lounge changed their policies and their volume tanked that was proof that it was all, or at least mostly, internal consumption by the distributor. So fucking stupid. And guess what, Scott? They all would be if we had the access to that data. We would see that across all of them. And not real retail sales demand by customers. And, and that's a very important distinction. And you don't have to just wipe out the whole MLM industry because you don't like it. What you have to do is you have to have a criteria by which MLMs are judged. And that one of those points is, do you have enough retail sales? Now, there's no law that defines what the minimum is, but when the FTC has done settlements with Veeam and Herbalife most recently, they settled on about 50%. And so if you have as much being sold to customers as you do the distributors buying the, the products or more, you could have. The, and the way they, exactly, what he's saying is correct. The way that the FTC has sort of gently slapped these MLMs on the wrist is by saying, well, at least 50% of your income has to come from genuine retail sales to customers. Uh, 50% uh, has to, more than 50% has to come from that and not from the distributors buying it and you guys counting that as revenue. Well, there's a very simple solution to get around this. You just make the compensation plan such that a person doesn't count as a distributor until they have X number of recruits under them. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I can't say the name of the company because of legal reasons, but in 2021, I covered a company quite extensively where they didn't even have a product. Their service was online video modules and live stream sessions teaching you how to trade Forex, supposedly. That's what they were teaching you. And you, it was an educational platform, so basically once they filmed all the modules, that was the product. It was evergreen. That was what people were paying for access to. You didn't have to create like some product like powder or shakes or protein bars or whatever. So there was no overhead, which was quite genius. And you didn't count. You didn't, you didn't qualify for any earnings in the comp plan until you had three people under you. Prior to that point, you were just considered a customer because, of course. So that is how they make sure that the ratio of customers to distributors is perpetually weighted in favor of looking like there's more customers. So, for example, if I was to design an MLM where the comp plan stated that in order to be eligible for the first tier of bonuses or compensation, you had to have five people under you. If we were to extrapolate that out, you would basically see a consistent five to one customer to distributor ratio, but it's all a lie because not only is it not true that there's five customers and one distributor, 
there's six customers. Me, the distributor, who is buying stuff, who is getting five new customers to also buy stuff. Those people are also probably on the path to becoming distributors. But whether their title changes uh, in the company's back office software or not, they are still the customer. Make no mistake. The MLM companies are smart enough to not risk losing money. Uh, rather, they're not stupid enough to risk going bankrupt because of your inadequacy as a distributor to sell. Because if that was truly what it was about, they would all fail. And so what do they do? They make sure that the product, let's say the lotion that their company sells, well, they got it from somewhere. You got it from them, right? You're the distributor. You got it from them, let's say for $500, the starter kit or the, you know, the privilege to be part of it. So how much do you think it costs them? You think it costs you $500 and it costs them also $500? You think they just broke even on it? No, of course not. They already made their money. They do not give a shit whether, you, whether people use your link, whether you sell the product, whether you get it delivered to your home and it sits in your garage. They do not care. So once again, it's been three years of me trying to hammer this point home in Scott Johnson's mind. And all I ask for is a little bit of evidence. There is tons of precedent. By his own admission, the Vima and Herbalife cases uh, showed that they had to restructure their business. But Scott couldn't give me one example, nor could Peter, couldn't give me one example of an MLM where they are not using this sort of uh, numerical trickery. So I think I'm asking for a pretty fair exchange of information here, just a little bit of evidence that what they are saying, this theory of this unicorn business model of a legitimate MLM, I, I just... I desire nothing more than to, to see what that looks like. Name one. More customers than distributors at volume, then you're considered a legitimate MLM. So that's a little arbitrary, you know, the 50%. Uh, but I think it does demonstrate free market demand. And that's what you're trying to prove. You're not trying to have every distributor sell a million dollars a year of products. That's really one of the advantages of MLM. Free market demand. Just on that note, I have to say, because I, I talked about this in my speech at the MLM conference, which Peter and Scott have still yet to uh, break down. I'm at, I want you to ask yourself at home, dear viewer, would you ever consider making a monthly purchase for an essential good in your household, whether it was a cleaning product, shampoo, protein powder? Would you inconvenience yourself? to the point where you had to get that product through somebody, whether it was messaging them directly or using their link just to support them for, and I'll be generous, let's say the product is equally as good, the shampoo. Let's say it's equally as good, but it's more expensive. Are you going to switch over from the brand you already know and trust that you've maybe been using for years just because somebody who you know is, is now selling it? Is that how consumers at large make their decision? I'm sure the employees and the shareholders and the corporate staff at Blockbuster had family members and friends galore who would go and use Blockbuster to uh, support their friend's company that they worked for. And as we have seen historically, that's not enough. It's not enough to shift the tide of actual market demand. Do you think an independent distributor, no matter how good of a salesperson they are, selling whatever product or service, is going to be able to compete with Amazon, Target, Walmart, etc.? The answer is fucking of course not. So when he talks about free market demand, it's, it's really funny actually because MLM is, you know, fabricated demand. Nobody actually needs the shit these people are selling. Nobody needs it. In the case of shampoo and powder, it's not even a question. In the case of like insurance, you could, you could make the case that some people need insurance, but do they need it from a pushy salesman who's in an MLM? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, you know, let's, let's keep listening to the logic here. Let me see what y'all are saying, actually. Scott is too far gone. So true. There are so many ghost accounts tied to distributors. Yeah, that too. We didn't even factor in the ghost accounts. Amanda says, it's crazy they're this close to understanding what's wrong with MLMs and then just still so far off. 
I think at this point they're just too deep in their like stubbornness to ever admit it. But what can you do? Um, what up, Joey K? Some MLMs are legit. The tool scam is the real problem. Marco is a stupid drug kingpin who is poor because he makes tons of money. Tons of money exploiting drug addicts and everyone is dumb but Scott. Basically, so far where we're at. Um, what up, Len Lens? We're not talking about affiliation links, uh, affiliate links quite yet. No. What up, Nick? Or Neek, N I E K? I'd like to see a neighbor, says Devin. Yeah, you were the one keeping Blockbuster alive. Hey, man, I need to re-up on the shampoo. You busy today, right? <laughs> Ridiculous. And I know NPAS, the way they would fire back at you is by saying, no, no, we don't need to meet up with them in person. They just use our link. But it's like, bro, even that is an extra step. Even that is an extra step that I don't need to take to buy a more expensive product. Come on, bro. Come on. You know, I have Amazon Prime for a reason. Exactly. Nina says, I get dog food shipped from Chewy every month, and I've never met Mr. Chewy. Exactly. Let's keep going. Is you don't have to be this super salesman. And you do have to sell some because you have to demonstrate free market demand. But you don't have to be a super salesman or woman. Um, so that's one point is the lack of retail sales. The other thing, which is not universal to MLMs, is the lack, or I should say not the lack, is the profit that's being made by the uh, top level distributors, particularly in Amway. I was in Amway for several years, so I, I know this from my personal experience in doing research on this since 2005. So I know what I'm talking about. And if you go on my website, which by the way, you can find on my Facebook page, if you go to facebook.com slash Scott Text Johnson, so it's S-C-O-T-T-T-E-X-J-O-H-N-S-O-N, all one word. Um, you'll find three websites. You'll find a link to this radio show, my YouTube, and my email. So it's all out there. And, and what you'll find on those websites, those links on the Facebook page, are examples of former Amway distributors making claims after they got kicked out, of course. They won't talk about it while they're in because of obvious <laughs> – it's pretty obvious why they don't um, – but they're making claims like, oh, yeah, um, I, I paid my emeralds and above four to five times more from the tools than I did from Amway, um, or, or Amway paid them, I should say. Um, another guy, he's my favorite, you know, quote-unquote favorite because of his claim, and he made this to a Salt Lake City newspaper. So you can actually read the link in the newspaper where this guy was giving an interview. His name is Brig Hart, um, B-R-I-G-H-A-R-T, and what he said basically was, I was making almost a million dollars a year. How's the audio this fucking bad? It's 2023, bro. From Amway. Now, this was a big, you know, big business guy. He was, I think, a double diamond. Um, he had a huge downline. He was actually a rock star because he was around when I was in Amway, and he was one of these really high-level guys. He was a rock star. He did not own his own tool business, but he did uh, have a very large group. And he said, yeah, I made you know, almost a million dollars a year from Amway, and I made eight to $10 million a year from the tools. Now, the reason it's a tool scam <laughs> is because they don't say that. We know. You hey, know? thumbs up the stream, y'all. There's 150 watching and only 84 likes. That's about half. Come on, y'all. Everybody knows my email beyond. That's my public email. Do your worst have to go searching for these things to find these statements they're very obscure you know they're on normally they're on blogs and that sort of thing a lot of these have been taken down that's why another reason why the Brig Hart quote is important because it's actually a public newspaper where he gave an interview so it's it's really solid as far as a source and and so while they're in, they don't talk of it, not from Amazon Plan, um, but they were really just saying, hey, this new MLM pays out so much these critters. I have no idea. That's where I come from as far as good MLM versus bad MLM. Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do those two things, you have lots of retail sales, 
and whatever profit you're making on the tools is disclosed, that doesn't mean that the MLM is perfect. Uh, by no means. In fact, I forbid any goon to go on Building Fortunes Radio, including Eliza, without my permission. Henceforth, that is an official imperial decree. And it doesn't get more official than that. Trust me. World Financial Group is in trouble with the Canadian government right now. Um, not because either one of those things, as far as I know. What they have said, however, is that the WFG distributors were selling inappropriate insurance to people. And that often happens um, probably with even non-MLM insurance representatives, but certainly... Talk Longson for real. Shut the fuck up. Let me skip ahead a bit. In, in MLM, it's certainly someone who really should be buying a term life. In, um, and, and I'm sure they're doing that. You know, Pyramid is not that you're selling inappropriate one of the things that he's done recently here we go detail sales or do you not and the inappropriate product is just another issue it's not the same thing and and marco gets that mixed up all the time um because he's always stupid i mean that, that's just the way it goes so um well it's not on so anyway this version. that's sort of our lead in and i, and I did i did want to bring eliza back but i wanted to make a few comments first um this is scott from a marco's past show or two that he made um one of the things that he's done recently is he talks about, I think it was World Financial Group. He says, gee, I found that they had 150,000 uh, excuse me, 150,000 distributors, and then they added 50,000, but then at the end of the year, they still had 150,000. In other words, probably most of the new people quit, and some of the people that were there for more than a year quit. And so it was just a level number, you know. If you compare the beginning of the year to the end of the year, it's the same number, 150,000. So he uses that logic, and then he uses the five by five by five logic, right? You sponsor five, each of them sponsors five, each of those five sponsors five, et cetera. Well, Marco, you can't use both of those examples simultaneously. You have to pick one. <laughs> you, you can't say that they just level you know, distributors throughout the year, and then this five by five by five geometric growth. You, you can't have both. And I'm going to go into Jeromar. Bro, what the fuck are you talking about, Scott? Are you going to address the suspiciousness of motherfuckers ending the year with the same amount of recruits or same amount of distributors that they started with despite recruiting 33% of that number? Of course not. Here a little bit. There was a case back in the 1970s called Jeromar. G-E-R-R-O-M-A-R, -R -R with dashes in between, Jiro um, But before I do that, let me make a couple of other comments. Um, this, I think, came from Wednesday. There's a, there's a commenter, and, and by the way, Peter, we, we, could do every, we could do a show every day on the stupid comments on Marco's stupid uh, live shows, uh, and, and maybe – two or three hour long shows every day because there's just so much, so much stupidity there. So I just picked one of these out because it, it just really illustrated, I think, a mindset that these people have. Um, and that's sort of the source of a lot of these stupid comments. So th there's a commenter called Vegetabilis, something like that. Ah. Uh, two hours and 38 minutes and 14 seconds, I think, of Wednesday's show. And here's the comment. Any credible business guarantees success for your efforts, or it's not a opportunity. That's not really true. Now, I know we live in this this culture probably for the last couple of definitions, you know, where everybody gets a trophy, right? Everybody wins, um, but that's not how life works. <laughs> so, just because you have an opportunity, does not guarantee success. It means you have an opportunity. You might succeed. You might fail. Um, you know, I could never be, for example, a, a horse jockey. They just ran the Kentucky Derby earlier today because I'm 6'5", almost 6'6". Six, six, How, <laughs> How did I know he was going to use that example so that he could alley-oop uh, a flex about how tall he is? I love this man. About 250 pounds. I, I would crush a horse <laughs> compared to the jockeys. <laughs> I'd crush a horse. Scott, is that you in the pictures that we, uh, that I showed on the stream the one time where you were with the fucking my pillow guy 
at the at the Trump rally. The pieces all add up. You said you met that guy, Mike Lindell. You said you were at the Trump rally. We found photos from the Trump rally with people around Mike Lindell. One of them looks like he could be the older version of your younger Navy military photo. We think it's you. Um, Scott, I hate to break it to you, brother, but the guy in that picture, if that is you, was not 200 and whatever pounds you said. Not, not even 200 pounds. So let me know. They have on their backs. And you wouldn't put Shaquille O'Neal on a horse. You also wouldn't put a jockey on a basketball court. You know, it makes no sense. So just because you have an opportunity does not guarantee success. Yeah, he, he doesn't – he doesn't uh... – he can't stand to watch my streams, but he has the literal timestamp and username of a person who made a comment. Insane. Yeah. 19 minutes into their one hour and 30 minute, 19 minutes into their 90 minute show and still no guests. Can't, can't believe this. Cause I'm a big guy. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Funny how Scott's favorite politician is a perfect example of participation trophy entitlement. LOL. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be him in that picture because that dude, yes, Jaina, he did have a shirt that said Navy on it and he was tall. Insane. All right, here we go. Isn't defining what a him having the timestamp is the most Zodiac killer shit. <laughs> Um, I don't know if this has already been a suggestion, but I'm just going to put it, um, mentions the comment of a goon. Sorry for all the submissions, uh, beyond. Incredible businesses. So, but that's, that's the logic of a lot of these commenters on Marco's site. You know, he attracts stupid. So, um, that's the way it goes. Uh, there's another one here um, by Bad Dog Sports. Woo! He's one of these guys a few shows ago. Welcome back, Bad Dog. Uh, has Scott responded to you yet? That, um, I had invited on this show and, to defend some of his comments, and he backed out. And he didn't, didn't fucking back out, pussy! You ghosted him. He posted the fucking receipts in the Discord, bro. What are you talking about? How are you going to come on to uh, your show, which only my audience listens to, and lie about something we have verifiable evidence of. <laughs> he backed out? Nah, bro. He told you he'd fold you in half, and you didn't respond, which is quite the pussy -o behavior because earlier during this radio show, you said how it's just a phone call. There's no need to be scared. <laughs> so I don't know what <laughs> the fuck you're on about, bro. <laughs> made a more recent comments. Here's his comment. They want no part of me, but I'll gladly go on there when I have more time in the summer. Well, first of all, I do want a part of you. <laughs> Bad dog. Pause! Sports. Um, I already invited you on the show, and you wimped out. Now, you listen what to What do you Marco's mean he wimped show, out? At least. He has a fucking YouTube channel that he runs. Oh, a, a YouTube channel is uh, this thing where it's like it's sort of like a radio show, but people can see you as well, and uh, people can subscribe to you. The subscribers are like people who are interested in the content you create, and so they uh, sign up basically to see more of your content in the future when it is released. Um, so yeah, that's what YouTube is, and uh, yeah, Scott, that's what Bad Dog does. So two, maybe three times a week, and he has two to four hour shows. You cannot say you don't have enough time. So he doesn't have time because he's doing those shows. That's just, you're scared. And I think Eliza has pointed out, um, you know, how scared these people are. How has Eliza pointed that out? Anyways, um, yeah, somebody clipped that for me, the timestamp of, I want a piece of you. Honestly, fuck it. Y'all just send me the clips and I'll download them and put them on the stream deck. I ain't got time to download the whole BFR go to the timestamp, clip the audio, put it on the stream deck. It's a lot of work. And I still haven't even added the, uh, the timestamps where Scott says, where is it? I have a page in here. This is from now episodes ago. I'm going to lose it if I don't fucking figure it out soon. Uh, what'd they say? 
I don't know. I can't even find the note now. Oh, yeah, here. Uh, they say the F slur. What, uh, Peter says, what the fuck, Marco? Uh, teeny balls. That's another one that I need to clip. There was also one where they say, thank you, Marco, or something like that. I think that's on there. Um, well, it's somewhere. It's somewhere here. Anywho. All right. Let's see. Let's keep going. Because she came on here and, and did a fine job. So um, now here's another one. Um, this is from Pam McLaughlin. Um, nice, Pam. Shout and, out to and Pam. I'll just read the comment, and then I'll give the background. <laughs> Alex says, what part does Scott want? <laughs> oh, fuck. So her comment is, Scott managed to insult many of us. That Joey K says, I forbid anyone from talking to Scott until you get a certification in special ed. All right, let me go back. Let me go back. Let's see what... Uh... Come on here and, and did a fine job. So um, now here's another one. Um, this is from Pam McLaughlin. Let's see, Pam. Um, and, and I'll just read the comment, and then I'll give the background. So her comment is, Scott managed to insult many of us that have to live on medications in order to stay alive. All right. What she was talking about there, some background information, is apparently she's taking some medications for cancer. That's not what I was talking about. I never said that. In fact, I said the opposite. I said there are some times when you have to have medications for certain conditions, but the point is we're over-medicated. I, I know in the United States we are. I don't know enough about Canada to know. By the way, Beyond, I love that you added this at the bottom of the bingo sheet. It's a, it's a thing that says for Scott Johnson only. I don't know if y'all could see that down here. It says for Scott Johnson only. And when you click it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. I clicked away from the bingo. Okay, no, it's still good. I kind of want to do a different bingo sheet because there's, other, there's things he said that uh, aren't on this version of it, so... I think, I think we would have had a bingo by now if it was the different spawn of it. If there's a, you know, and I'm talking about legal drugs, not illegal drugs. But we just have... Thumbs up the stream, by the way, y'all. 160 watching, only 100 likes. Thumbs up the thing, this sort of societal um, position that, hey, medications are great. Uh, drugs are good. And so that just promotes the illegal drugs also because, hey, everyone's doing drugs. So, you know, who cares if it's legal or illegal? And it's just that sort of mindset, that culture that has gotten into our country for sure. Um, you know, and, and so, Pam, you're a B.I. bitch. That's Rush Limbaugh's. <laughs> <laughs> well, so wait a minute. Wait, Scott. Why is Pam a bitch? Because she said that. Hold on, bro. I'm so confused, dude. Why is Pam a bitch? Yeah, first of all, that's a B, uh, you're a B-I-H is a drop. Thank you so much. But why is she a bitch? Why is she a bitch for saying that you offended people who take medication? Oh, because, oh, because you said, uh, you said the opposite. Okay, right, right. <laughs> Fucking hell way of, of saying it. I, I just think that that was the most stupid comment to say when I said the exact opposite. My point is we're over-medicated. Someone doesn't feel good, okay, pop a pill. Someone has a little bit of pain, okay, pop a pill. Pop a pill is a drop as well. I hope y'all are typing this shit down. Someone uh, is anxious, okay, pop a pill. And, and, and that's the wrong thing. It just it just encourages us consuming more and more drugs and putting that stuff into our body that does have some benefits, but it also has side effects. And I think culturally, it's even more important um, that, that we're abusing these things. Um, so anyway, Pam, you're a liar. Uh, you, you took me out of context completely, and I'm not going to stand for it on this show. Um, Says a guy who won't even show his fucking face, bro. Show your face, Scott. For real. Also, how's she a liar? It was just her, it was her opinion. But all good. Dude, it takes nothing to get this guy upset. So let me get back into 
Um, <laughs> worst <laughs> apology ever. Top 10 worst YouTuber apologies. <laughs> Jeromar case. Again, that's G-E-R-R-O-M-A-R. Uh, because this was a really important case back in 1973. It was reviewed in 1975 um, because the, the Juromar company um, appealed the decision. And so the, the judge upheld some things and, and, and uh, you know, reversed some things. But the, um, the, the way this judge. Dis- yeah, I, I stand with Pam. Goes against goes without saying the thinnest skin for sure. But he's very tall. Very tall man, big strong guy. Frankly, one of the tallest, perhaps. Tremendous, tremendously tall, big strong guy. He's going to do it bigger, he's going to do it better. He was down there at my rally, big rally, frankly, at the southern border. Crook Hillary won't be there to stop us, frankly. So, I mean, we love Scott, but let's keep going. Right. <laughs> the FPC's trying to do this five by five by five thing um, is just great because he wasn't just disagreeing with the FTC. He was actually mocking them and putting them down and saying, why are you bringing such a stupid argument in front of me? Um, so let me, let me just read from the decision. Who's going to be the first dono of the night, by the way, y'all? This shit looking, what are we saying? Uh, quote, the sole evidence to support the commission's holding that the plan is inherently unfair and deceptive is a mathematical formula. The commission, half of whom, hopefully, are prospective lingerie correction. I don't think you can, um, but you're you're welcome to just Google Juromar FTC Jesus. and find this. Um, it, Still it's going. out there in public. This this decision, um, um, and and Marco's one of them, one of many. Um, that this infinite ge- ge- geometric progression is is the problem, and it's not. It's a lack of retail sales. So, anyway, let me stop there. I could go on and on with with Marco. Uh, we have Eliza back. She was here last week, and uh, we had a great conversation. Uh, both Eliza and, and Peter's son uh, had some uh, drug addiction problems, and, and hopefully they're not going to fall back into that. Um, and it, it's a very common story, unfortunately. Um, there's lots of people that had very similar experiences to both <laughs> Peter's son and Eliza. Beyond, Beyond says, I'm going to let a, I'm going to let slip a little secret. I've been training a language model on Scott and Peter. When these curmudgeons die, we will have an AI that can do their show for them. <laughs> Honestly, bro, with the amount of quotes you already have, it wouldn't be that hard, dude. Marry it to like the wiki pages about different MLMs who have gotten in trouble for being pyramid schemes, and you will quite literally have that uh, working perfectly. Nobody, yeah, 30 minutes into an hour and 30 minute thing, and no Eliza still. And, and I don't claim to say just say no is the only thing we should do. That was another thing that was commented on, on uh, Marco's podcast. But we do need to say that. We do need to say that this drug culture, legal and illegal, is just hurting us in a lot of different ways. Uh, Mar- uh, Peter, you, you pointed out last week, yeah, my son was stealing stuff from me. I had some of his friends come to my house. You could tell they were just checking things out. And, and who knows where else they were doing criminal activity. Wasn't much to steal. You know, at other parents' homes and businesses and wherever, you know, wherever they could find stuff. To- I just imagine Eliza sitting there knitting, like crocheting and waiting for them to be done sell to to buy more drugs and and it it just has many many tentacles what up pink flaws appreciate you is that green oh what up green adian what's up evil tentacles to it so it's not just the drugs themselves and the personal harm it's all these other things that just you know flow from that so um eliza i guess if you want to you could you could review uh Last week's show a little bit if you want, or if you want to just start talking about some new topics. Uh, Peter and I are open to questions. Um, if you want to just make some, you know, statements and your positions, uh, it, it's a free-flowing show. So Where could my chainsaw be? Yeah, that was funny. Go right ahead. For sure. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for having me back. Um, and uh, the first thing I wanted to just say is um, I, I want to ask you a question, a question Scott. 
Um, because before I came on the show, we had had a discussion through um, email um, where, you know, a few names were kind of thrown, like idiots and stuff, um, my way. Um, so I just want to ask you, like, do you still stand at that same point about me? Like, do you still feel that same way? Or after our discussion last week, do you have a different standpoint Ooh, on, on me? Press that fucking smoke, Eliza! Let's see. Well, I think I'll go back to your original comment on Marco's show where you called both Peter and I a POS. Now, I use POE, a piece of excrement, but you were using <laughs> POS. So, God forbid. Wow, I like how he's not going to apologize. He's just going to double down and say, well, it's because you did this, Fern. You did this. So I don't punch people. Okay, I don't attack people. I do counterpunch. I do counterattack, and I'll do so in an overwhelming manner. Bro, Peter, why are you still pushing this same narrative that you used on Savvy Stream? When you were on Savvy Stream talking about this, saying this exact same thing, saying you don't bully people, but you will fight back, there were tons of people in the chat being like, uh, I literally have screenshots of you tweeting at me, calling me a cunt because I wouldn't go on your radio show. So... Lie detector determined that was a lie. Uh, because I will not allow people to just call me names when they never even met me. And I don't know what you were referring to when you were calling me a POS and Peter a POS. <laughs> you started because it. Because <laughs> we've never done anything to you. We've never done anything to anybody, really, um, that, would, that would earn us that <laughs> title. Um, so that's why I did it. Was because really, Scott, you've never done anything that would earn you that title. What about missing your children growing up and wasting all the money that you could have been spending on them uh, in Amway? That's pretty shitty. I don't just take stuff. I don't. I'm not wired that way to just take abuse from somebody that doesn't even know me. I mean, that's so. That's the answer. Does that make sense to you? Wow. Sure, so. Condescending. What you were about to witness is so real. fucking cock. Big shout out to you, Eliza, for pressing that on him, though. But wow, what a cock! Hey, thank you, Lindy. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Lindy. I appreciate that. I gotta get the bag. Lindy understands that I gotta get the bag. Thank you, Lindy. <sighs> I'm not wired that way to just. Take abuse. Isn't he the generation of words can't hurt me? Yeah. Earlier being like, I'm 6'5", 250 pounds. All right. From somebody that doesn't even know me. I mean, that's so that's the answer. Does that make sense to you? For sure. For sure. And I, I don't remember exactly what um, caused me to, to write that comment. Um, I do. I do want to say that um, on the stream last Saturday, I did make a comment that you know, after speaking to you guys, um, my views have changed, definitely. Um, Boo! Boo! Just, you know, um, I think it's, yeah, when you talk to someone, it is de definitely different. Um, so I won't, uh, I won't say that I, I necessarily stand by that comment that I made. Um, like I said, I don't remember what it was in reference to, but probably something that was said that I just don't agree Eliza, with. Eliza, why are you tiptoeing around these motherfuckers and like trying to be nice to them and give them the benefit of the doubt? These dudes are pieces of fucking shit. Three years, three whole years that they've been saying the most vile shit about me, my relatives, my nieces, the goons. Bro, you're, don't bend the knee. We do not negotiate with terrorists in this cult. We do not negotiate with terrorists. Earlier in this chat, remember earlier, uh, earlier in this stream, I said I forbid anyone from going on BFR. Somebody whose name I don't recognize in the chat said people can go on whatever show they want. Obviously, but I'm doing a bit. And they want to take the magic of it, so you know what happened? They, I banned them. <laughs> it's on a, on, for my own value. Spec says, stupid-ass logic when you don't even know Marco, yet have been saying dumb shit. Exactly. 
of immorals. Um, maybe something. Thank you, hi, and thank you also to... Who is that? Michelle. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, hi. Appreciate y'all. Y'all, keep your eye on the prize, and you will see the prize. Anything to do with someone being gay or oh. um, something. I I'm not sure. I don't want to speak out of context because I don't know exactly what I was referring to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess I kind of walked that back a little bit now because after speaking to you, I, I don't. I Never know. apologize. Never bend the knee. Scott knows this very well. Necessarily stand on that same point. Um, but yeah, I just, the reason I ask is because um, <clears throat> just before I came on, you had mentioned uh, some of the comments on the stream in the last couple of uh, streams. And you had mentioned uh, one of uh, the commenters and you referred to her as a B-I-T-C-H. Um, and so I just, I don't... No, 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 a B-I-H. ...kind of appreciate that moving forward as, you know, we've spoke now and I <clears throat> I don't stand on the same place that I did with you guys before. Um, I can say that I didn't know you guys before. You um, still don't. I, I was a newer member, um, so I was only hearing certain things and certain recent things. Um, but yeah, I just, I think... Going forward, maybe name calling should be left on both sides. He, you were way too gracious to him, Eliza. He's like, he's like, bro. You asked him why he called you a bitch or whatever he called you. Here we go. I'm an idiot, and I want to touch your winky, Marco. Thank you so much. Let's go. Appreciate that, Scott. Um, he says to you, "Well, I only did it because you d d said this." Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense with you guys? I should have, I should make that a clip from my uh, from my ACN video. Nathan's saying, does that make sense with you guys? So, don't walk back, dick. He ain't walking it back. Fuck him. Fuck him. Um, out of it, and that's not just you guys. That's that's us too. Yeah, and that was and that was a response to her. Now, interestingly, <laughs> <laughs> fucking pussy. Jared says for a man that talks about being a big tough Navy veteran and he can't even show his face, text just shows how much of a coward he actually is. So true, so true. Damn. You didn't say sorry, but you're just too gracious, too gracious with these guys. Maybe that's why your last name is Grace. Aww. All right. Let's see. Um, nobody agreed. Nobody disagreed with you on Marco's comments that Peter and I were POSs, and nobody disagreed with her when she made that comment about, you know, having to take medications because of cancer. Nobody corrected her. Nobody said, "Hey, Scott didn't really say that." They just let it go, and and that's the other problem I have with Marco's goons, as he calls them, and and they fondly love it um, that that there's no honesty on that. <laughs> on that program. Marco's dishonest. All of his goons are dishonest. There's all kinds of hypocrisy going on. And if you find hypocrisy in me or Peter, let us know. Because ah! it's not... There's been so much just on this stream, Scott. ...intended to be that way. And, and <laughs> maybe it's... I would say probably it's because of lack of knowledge. You know, wow. I started Amway in 1993. Um, and I did it until I found out about the tool scam in 2005. I stayed in four more years trying to develop what I would call a legitimate Amway business, got no cooperation from the company themselves, started acting up and they kicked me out in 2009, which I was very happy about. Jesus Christ. So what is that? 16 fucking years? Scott, would you say Amway is a pyramid scheme? I'm actually curious. He talks about the Amway tool scam, but I wonder if he would say Amway is a pyramid scheme. You guys are all dishonest. As he continues to call you a drug dealer each week. Yeah, no doubt. Nobody has your back, Scott Lamau. Why would we? <laughs> oh, fuck. What up, Sheik Attack, Jenny? Dishonest goon. Tisk tisk. But ever since even 2000. He found a way to bring it back to the tool scam. So funny. He's like an AI that's only been trained to talk about one thing, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> I 
I started getting scammed at a way younger age, so I know more. Yeah. People cannot like you, Scott. Exactly. Scott, what if it's not that everyone was a dishonest drug addict, but that they just didn't like you, but that there was just hundreds of people who very much did not like you? <laughs> he got fired, but I thought he was a business owner. Dun, dun, dun. In five, when I found out about the tool scam, I was doing research this whole time from 2005 until now, as well as personal experience in the MLM from 1993 through 2005. So I know what I'm talking about. Anyone that has a different opinion is welcome to voice it on this show. Um, but you better be prepared to defend yourself because I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to say that every single solitary, you know, Amway distributor is exactly the experience that I experienced, but most of them are very similar. And, and so, you know, when people, you put me down, I just don't take it. It's not how I'm wired. Um, I, I don't ignore it. I, I punch back, you know, verbally, I punch back. Um, and, and that has served me well because it has resulted in people, um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. There's no spoon. Has it served you well, Scott? You've been blocked by damn near every person you've ever tried to collab with starting those kinds of conversations. So anyway, <laughs> that, that's my, that's my reaction. Appreciate Peter. you. Trey Tino, be safe, get home safe. If you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll weigh in just a little bit. <clears throat> what I've noticed. And that's just on Welcome back, Peter. Fired and hired myself. Love it. Because um, thing that the the chat is chats in general um, are either you know well behaved people or not well behaved people. And Marcos is a little bit more like a locker room sometimes where people are just jerking around or joking around. And I take a lighter side to it um, many times because it's just snipers making little comments about the different stupid things. Um, so for the most part, 80% of the stuff that's written on Marco's things is just people just trying to get their name to show up on a screen, get a little bit of attention from Marco perhaps, and maybe just kind of play around. So I, I realized those things. So the name calling stuff, you know, when people start calling people pieces of shit or stuff like that, that's just, okay, whoa, whoa, just kind of, kind of drawing the line there. You know, when Marco called me an effing idiot um, on- Peter, you are a fucking idiot. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times and I'll say it again live broadcast. I'm like, okay, Marco, you know, you just kind of drew the line, cross the line. <laughs> what are you going to do, pussy? Cross the line. And yet each week we keep doing the same dance. It's like the Batman cartoon I watched when I was growing up. He takes the Joker to jail. Next week, Joker's out again for a new adventure. What the fuck are you talking about, Peter? Literally, what the fuck are you talking about? You are an idiot. Nobody respects you. Nobody who you respect respects you back. You can't, you know, even when Robert Fitzpatrick gave you the time of day to uh, answer your questions about your name being mentioned in his book. By the way, Ponzinomics, you can get a, you can get a, get it on Amazon, affiliate link in my description. Even he asked you, what is a legitimate MLM name one? And you couldn't. Bill Keep doesn't respond to you guys. The FTC doesn't respond to you guys. Nobody fucking respects you guys because you're not worthy of anyone's respect. Come on, Peter. Wake up. You're too old for this. And uh, that's just not right. There will be some retaliation, and there certainly has been. So I think relative to Scott, one of the things I've learned about Scott, Scott's real good at punching back. I mean, if somebody says something about him unjustly, he's not going to hold back, and he's going to just kind of go from... I like how they are, for some reason, on this stream being like, abbreviating their swear words and like acting shocked at me calling him a fucking idiot. Peter, you have called me an F-A-G many, 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 many times on the show. What are you talking about? Off to full throttle. So he, he doesn't hold back because he's just going to do that <laughs> one punch and lay them out. Game on, Marco. And um, unfortunately, Marco and a lot of the people on his thing, I think are just being part of the game of just being kind of childish. So I think that's sometimes the way a lot of people uh, joke in there. And also, most – and I said this before, most of the smart – Oh, yeah, and making the websites. Come on, bro. Um, like the people that aren't part of this little beef that we have going on, most of the smart ones would probably get – impatient with him maybe listen to one or two things and then eventually be done with him says the guy talking about me for three years 
So they're mostly listening to Marco for maybe some information about a company that they have a beef with, or maybe they just like the entertainment, or maybe they want to help him out, or maybe whatever might be the thing, or maybe they so find you admit, him funny. So you admit I'm entertaining and funny. And it's their uh, ability to have a friend, um, even though they don't know him and he doesn't know them. But the name calling, I agree with you, is not necessarily ever productive. But And it stoops to that level, and I don't agree with it, and I usually don't do that. And the reason why we focus on Marco. Scott, I will – sorry, Scott and Peter. I will lean you guys both over my knee and spank you on the bum like you were my son just to get it through your thick skulls that you're being bad boys. And I think that's the most appropriate way of reprimanding you because I think in an actual, like, put your fists up fight, both of you would turn around and run. So I'm going to have to reprimand both of you and give you a spanking and maybe even wash your mouth out with soap because you've been bad boys and you're not listening. And when you're not listening, it makes, makes Papa very sad. All right? It's because Marco picked on us first. <laughs> I hope that helps. <laughs> these guys, the combined age of these guys is like 125 years old. I'm 27. With uh, some of the things going on here. And the other thing relative to your situation, um, I think you have very valuable content to talk about uh, relative to the things we were talking about, addiction. And maybe we'll talk about some stuff relative to MLM on this radio show as well. But you have a you have a, you have an experience that needs to be spoken about because other people can learn at all different levels. People that might be at that same level you're at right now. Maybe some parents are listening in. Maybe some uh, kids that have uh, uh, family members that are going through some stuff. That message has to be spoken about and reached out. And I wanted to make sure that we had a platform, even though it doesn't fit. Um, the typical anti-MLM or pro-MLM position of Scott's radio show, you reached out, wanted to speak, and I don't mind dedicating, you know, a couple of radio shows for, let's call it off-topic. And I'm also going to blend it back into MLM because one of the things that you'll probably notice if you haven't been around for a while is that drug addicts, Mm -hmm. alcoholics, Mm -hmm. people with mental health issues are a big part of the pro-MLM or the anti-MLM so we can blend your lessons and some of the stuff that you're working on to help people into these topics as well. So anyway, so there's my little uh, feedback on some of the things that you were mentioning. And when and, and you called Peter, when you just, called us... Just to add to that. Sure. Go ahead. No, no, no. When she, when she said that, I, I realized that she doesn't know who we are. And sometimes it's real easy for people to kind of get caught up in the Marco Goon th- group thing. And that's, you know, mo- most likely most of the things that happen, most of the people that are talking trash, mm. if we sat down with them face to face, would probably be pretty nice people. Bro, um, says you and S- Scott doesn't, your boyfriend Scott doesn't even show his fucking face. What do you mean face to face? Yeah, back probably back. so. And, and, just, and, and just to add to what you're saying there, Peter, if, if Marco was running a show where he was just sort of, Goofing around, goofing around like he used to have these shows where he called them silly goose times, you know, where he was just doing stupid stuff and, you know, giving his eyebrows and, you know, those kinds of things. Silly I goose times. Fine. That, those comments match what you're doing. You know, you're just being <laughs> a stupid young kid. You're, you're raising money so you could shave off your eyebrows and shave your head and all these different things that he did to raise money for himself because he doesn't have a job. Um, I would say, fine, those comments, they fit the activity. But what Marco is now trying to do is he's trying to be serious in his own way about MLM scams. And so there are literally, I'm not exaggerating, there are literally millions of people drawn into MLM scams just in the United States every year. And there's millions more. Someone timestamp silly goose times. That's a drop for 1,000%. Thousand, thousand that's a drop in MLMs that are getting scammed. And so we're talking about a lot of people. We're talking about a lot of damage. I personally was damaged quite a bit, Uh both monetarily, and we've said it on this show many times. I lost a lot of money, but I lost a lot more valuable time with my two sons growing up. You're a fucking loser, Scott. Uh, Thumbs up the stream, y'all. Thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. Uh, 40 of y'all have not clicked like. 182 viewers and 142 likes. 
thinking I was pursuing a legitimate business, only to find out later I was not. And so this is very serious to me. And it's not just me personally. It's those millions and millions of people that are going to be scammed. They are scammed right now, and they're going to be scammed in the future unless this quote-unquote anti-MLM movement starts to think a little bit and stop following people like Robert Fitzpatrick and Marco and, and frankly, most of the other anti anomers on social media because they just don't have the right message. They just don't understand um, what the real problem is, the lack of retail sales and tool scams. And there goes Marco rolling his eyes again. But those are the fundamental problems um, by my analysis. I'm one of the <laughs> only people in the world that will debate this with anybody. Um, except for Marco, because he's just so stupid. Uh, he's going to have to listen to me for a while. And, and Bro, I've invited Scott on this stream so many times, and you know what he said when, one time when, I still, when he was still active in my chat? He was like, you blew it, Marco. What do you mean I blew it? You invited me, bitch. I also gave him a homework lesson a couple weeks ago um, that he has to complete before I'm going to talk to him. Um, but anyone else that wants to debate and then Wait, what was my homework lesson, y'all? What was my homework lesson? I don't remember is welcome to come on this show and if you have counter evidence to my positions you're welcome to bring it we can discuss it argue it debate it whatever term you want to use and and it'll be an open discussion um most pro and anti mlm people will not do that most of them are just going to stay in their corner and you know just keep repeating their falsehoods on both sides now both the mlm and anti mlm and they'll just do that forever and they won't come on this show and debate uh and so you know that that's the challenge we have and that's why eliza is such a great guest as she said i'm willing to come on your show and now all those guys well the thing is i can't use that peter talks about women because that was scott talking about women so unfortunate guys i think his name was connor in this uh bad dog sports no, you guys are just wimps. You know, a woman comes on the show, a young woman, and, and you guys are so wimpy that you, you, uh -oh. can't, you can't conjure up the no uh, quote-unquote courage. Well, if, if I could say Connor Banshee, Bad Dog Sports, you guys are wimps according to Tex. Hey, if I could say, um, I do hope that others take the invitation to come on because it really isn't that scary, <laughs> to be completely honest. Like, we're just having a conversation, that's it, and... Bad Dog, you have my advanced permission to go on BFR. Um, I know that some some of the people in the chat do have MLM experience, and it's not great. Um, so, And I know that you guys would be happy to talk about that, um, but that's their decision. Um, I and Pass says, Marco on Building Fortunes Radio would be like the Super Bowl. Hilarious. Cameo appearance by Eliza, for real. It's going to be goddamn 2025 by the time they respond to my 2023 conference speech, bro. Uh, in the, bro, it's actually crazy. Like they're gonna spend their whole summer talking about me every Saturday night of their summer, talking about me. Insane. You guys are just weak sauce, bunch of heathens. You see? Yeah. I wanted to come on to talk to you guys because I felt that it was easier to have a conversation like this than to continue a sort of back and forth to the the radio show you know and then back through the chat like why not just cut out the middleman and just have a conversation um and so that's why so i came jump, on so good idea jump to the topic and we're going to try to talk as little as we can unless you're asking us a question because i want to hear more from you right okay so i do have some questions um and i think the first one the best one to start out with is um, maybe Scott can answer this. Uh, I don't really know. Scott, Connor says, Scott, I'm going to come on the show as soon as you show your face. There you go, Scott. Peter, your experience um, in MLM. But um, in your experience, do you guys, have you guys seen like um, people, maybe leaders or the company um, targeting people who use substances or have used substances, whether it's alcohol or drugs? Um, and like targeting them, bringing them in to use their story to sell a dream. Uh, my experience is from Am from the Amway perspective, uh, the answer would be no. Um, now that doesn't mean that they're not going to sponsor somebody like that. In fact, Brig Hart, I mentioned earlier, 
is an example of that. You know, he was a surfer dude uh, up there where Peter lives now, uh, I think in the Daytona Beach area. You know, he was a surfer dude, a druggie, and then Amway turned him around. That's part of his inspirational story. But I don't think he was expressly targeted. It's just that when you go out and, and, and try to find prospects, you know, it's a, it's a shotgun approach. You, you, you just contact as many people as you can, and one of them happens to be a drug addict. So, but it's not really, hey, you guys need to go after drug addicts. And here's why, is <laughs> drug addicts typically don't have any money. And so, especially from Amway's perspective, the, the upline, they say, we want you to sponsor up. In other words, try to find somebody that's in a higher socioeconomic level than you are um, because the tendency is to sponsor down, to find people that are not making as much money as you. And if you go down like two or three generations like that, all of a sudden, you know, all you're contacting is druggies because that's all the people they know. <laughs> and, and so um, they want people that can afford the overpriced products and even more can afford the tool scam. That's what they're looking for. They won't say that, but that is what they're looking for. That is why they say, you know, find somebody in a higher social economic level because you want to find somebody that can afford those those things. Um, now, I'm not saying that, that nobody in Amway targets, you know, drug addicts or no other MLM targets drug addicts. I won't speak to something that's outside of my experience, uh, but I think in general that's probably true that, you know, that you want to find people that actually have the money to buy the overpriced products and they're not, you know, putting a needle in their arm or whatever they're doing. Um, you want them out there you know, prospecting and, and getting new people into the business. So that's, you know, where I'm coming from. Peter, what's your take on that? Okay. So, um, Eliza, you had mentioned you don't know my experience, so I'll just kind of give you a yeah. very brief overview of my experience. So I was a distributor a long, long, long time ago when I was first, you know, learning about MLM. And I think I was a distributor first for the direct sales company I was with, which was called Electrolux. That was the first time I ever saw the circles. So I was in direct sales, um, hiring, training, recruiting, motivating was what we did anyway. And when they introduced the direct, uh, the MLM compensation plan, it's one of the reasons why I got promoted to the level I did in the direct sales arena, where I ran one office, five offices, 35 offices, 96 different offices in the area uh -huh. by president. When I left, my mentor wound up calling me up. He was fired. So my mentor was fired and for threatening without threatening. Thumbs threatening, up the stream, y'all. He was threatening, if you will, the national VP. And when he left, uh, he called me up and he says, what do you know about MLM? I said, I don't know anything about MLM, you know, realistically, besides what we did over here in Electrolux, but I do know that I made a ton of money. And he mm -hmm. told me about a company called Envirotech, and I, I would follow him anywhere. He was my mentor. So I had lots of experience as a distributor and selling a product to customers uh, because of my direct sales background. Then eventually, uh, I'll fast forward, um, I wound up being in the lead generation business to supplement what we're doing in a network marketing company. I owned part of a network marketing company. I've been president of trade associations relative to the network marketing industry, which afforded me to work with a lot of the top lawyers, vendors, suppliers, like some of the best people in the industry, also know some of the worst people in the industry as well, have a really large, uh, vast experience in the industry. So that's not bragging, that's just stating facts. So right. now let's, go to the, let's go to the drug addiction thing. I'm always trying to reverse engineer things. So if you want something, figure out what steps were necessary to go get it. So one of the things that I learned is I'm going to use an, a cliche, the cream always rises to the top. So that usually has to do with talent. So if you're good at what you do, you bring your head with you wherever you go, you're going to be on the top of wherever you go. So that's kind of positive. But let's talk about drug addicts, alcoholics, and people like that. They have a, they have a skill that they have. Dave Vaughn says, this guy that Peter's talking about is the same guy that brought Peter into direct sales, asking if he would kill someone for him, apparently just to test his loyalty. Amazing. I like your iPad, Cafe Stranger, who is 20 years my junior. Yeah, exactly. Developed in that addiction 
called lying. And you and I know, uh, because we've been associated with addicts, that addicts are some of the best. And so, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm opportunity. Talk about Marco. Medical claims. So, past, you know, sociopaths, narcissists, um, and I knew Marco's rolling his head, you know, because he's going to say, oh, you're a narcissist. I've heard of- he's rolling his head. Call me a narcissist. Um, so narcissists, sociopaths, uh, pathological liars, people that lie convincingly and have no problem with Eliza, them. I wanted you to go on there. Actually, I didn't want you to do anything. But what I wanted to see was somebody, one of the goons going on there and pressing the smoke and defending their emperor. Marco. Marco. They do very well here. Now, by the way, they do very well in other industries, too. Take a look okay. at Elizabeth Holmes, the gal who did Theranos. Yeah. You know, the idea that you, we're going to develop something, you're going to pinprick your finger, and we're going to be able to actually test 200 different diseases, you know, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna convince Henry Kissinger, you know, people that should know better, and CVS and Walgreens that this I is mean, true. I mean, ideally, it's, it's a good idea, but it's realistically, it's not something, you know. Benefit because there is no upline. Now, you, Peter, were in the position of a trainer on how to do it properly. Uh, that's not MLM. That's direct sales, not trying to get more recruits in your... And therefore, right. they built a cult. And is, I'm telling you, it was very done? devastating. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where we broke up. Actually, Peter Lazarnik and Abby, they got a divorce from us. We bought them out um, because... Not just me, but for other reasons, they really wanted to bring people full of their version story, and Sally and I just basically kept it. My comments on the meetings, um, there, there's a couple different types of meetings, right? There's meetings that the distributors go to um, for functions that the— up- Ooh, Nightwing playing bingo along with us says, I got the Peter emphasizes a random word. Woo-woo. Any of you guys have a bingo yet? My bingo sheet doesn't have it yet puts on and that's where they make a lot of their money from the tickets um, and buying all of their goodies that's at, the, at those meetings but then there's also those reward type destinations where people that have achieved you know like double diamond or above in Amway they go to uh, these you know really nice places you know Hawaii um, Amway also owns an island in the Caribbean called Peter Island uh, coincidentally, Peter, um, <laughs> Peter Island. Um, Don't laugh at that, Eliza. <laughs> I'm just playing. And, and they go, you know, on African safaris and, and those kinds of things. And I think Amway pays most of the bill. They, you know, pretty good money in my uh, alcohol culture. No um, training or look made it onto the Vegas trip, but you do need to recruit people in order to get onto that. Oh, shit. Um, I have a vertical bingo, y'all. Let's get it. Woo! My bad. I didn't see that. Thank you, guys. We got a vertical bingo. Let's keep going. Hold on. Let me do it. Marco! There you go. Uh, in my experience... Uh, Peter Island. I'd love to go to Peter Island. Um, I haven't... Peter Pan. ...been, like, recruited for, like, my past or you know my story or anything but i've been told by people for sure to use my experience it's amazing how even with a guest in there to inject their own like opinions and whatever they want to talk about scott and peter largely managed to still just say the same shit it's almost like eliza isn't even there it's, it's actually remarkable um to try and help recruit people onto my team um and that kind of thing. So um, I guess my next question would be... No, Devin Kelly, they mean like the retreats for the top leaders who make the most money so that they can take the pictures back to flex on their downline and re-inspire them and whatever. Um, do you think that people in MLM should be sharing about their past pain and traumas and stuff the way that some of them are? Um, or are telling their people to be doing because that that was my experience um, of being told to you know use my trauma and my pain to try and help recruit. Definitely yes, and, and let me just ask you, uh, Eliza, um, what, what's your 
understanding of these trips to Vegas and the alcohol flowing from your own personal experience with the various MLMs that you were in? Uh, yeah, so um, I I never actually got to go on the trip. Um, right now I can't even travel due to past charges and stuff. I'm still trying to figure all of that out. Um, but uh, from what I see, <laughs> you know, from um, people that uh, were on the same team as me or uh, going on the trip, um, for, but I... And then you had to be back by 9 a.m. the next day, so there was no mm-hmm. time to get into any kind of trouble at all because mm-hmm. um, you were just wiped out. I mean, you were totally wiped out. Most of the people, you know, by midnight or so, because you were there um, Friday night really late, all day Saturday really late. Uh, and, and so, I mean, people were basically sleeping in their chairs after, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And, and you know, some of them left. Uh, but if you were loyal, you had to stick to it, right? But most of them were just dead asleep in their chairs. Um, that, that's how extreme it was and, and how little opportunity you really had. to. Now, that doesn't mean that some of the people that left early didn't go out to bars and get drunk. I, I wouldn't know that because I stayed at the meeting. So, you know, so would that, that be like, could have happened. Uh, but, would but that it be wasn't like a common. convention, though? Or would that be like a training convention type thing? Or would that be like um, like an incentive trip that you're talking about? It was the training type yeah, because I never made it to the level of uh, the right. reward type trips, um, so I, I don't have any experience with those. Scott and Peter, I'll make you an offer right now. I will, I will join you on building fortune on losing fortunes radio. Or better yet, since the only people who listen to it are my goons, I invite both of you to join me on my radio show podcast live stream. And I promise I will not say one bad name about any of you unless, like, I want us to respect the holy ground that we walk upon if we do this, where you're not allowed to say anything that is like name calling or call someone someone's opinion or behavior a derogatory term, stupid, idiotic, whatever. I promise I will respect those holy rules so long as you guys do and i will invite you on to always stupid narco the marco the narco mucha bears live stream so let me know the offer's out there um i'm sure they didn't push as hard as they did with the downline because it was kind of a celebratory thing it was a it was really an amway event versus a distributor run event and so i'm sure amway didn't keep people up until late at night and so forth um, but it was, you know, it, it, it was definitely not an opportunity to get into trouble, uh, unless you left early. And what about you know, opportunity? But, yeah, you can't not say stupid. Exactly. Cats. Yeah. It's like in person offer. Cause obviously before COVID, I know a lot of stuff now is online. Um, and we're just kind of getting back into like in person opportunity things. I actually just went to, um, something to support a few friends, uh last week and it was an opportunity for an opportunity meeting yeah that whole sort really varies across different industries different sort of a positive and negative connotation tool scam is the big example of that. lol it's like i can click to a random point and it'll just be tool scam uh, so lack of retail um, i'm sales. not sure if we were answering your question or not what was what was your last thought again um, yeah, no, just um, the, the very last question I had asked was more about um, sharing, like... What's crazy is how consistent these guys are with this radio show and with talking about me specifically when they don't even have, like, MLM success to show for it. Like, I can't even hate these guys and be like, look how rich they got off scamming people because, like, both of them are failures. It's kind of... It's actually remarkable. Sharing these things. Like, should we be sharing um, or should like people be sharing their traumas and their, you know, their past um, to try and recruit people into the MLM. Yeah, I I would say in general, um, that is not done in Amway um, until you get to the really high level. You know, I mentioned Brig Hart recently, uh, earlier in the show, Um, you know, the surfer dude with the drug. He's, He's still answering the question about people using their trauma problem that was part of his stick when he was up there as a double diamond 
you know, he was talking about, yeah, I was a wiped out surfer dude taking drugs and, you know, really messed up. And it's the rag rags to riches story, right? And that's very common in MLM. Um, now, I know a lot of other MLMs, um, such as Herbalife, uh, do accentuate that, even at the very low levels. In fact, people are told to, you know, think about what story they're going to tell, you know, how down they were when they first started uh, to make that part of their pitch. Um, and, uh, and if you don't have one, make one up. You know, I've heard that many times about Herbalife and, and probably other MLMs too. But in Amway, that's generally not done, um, you know, especially at the lower levels when you're just trying to get people in the business, when you're trying to recruit. You just show them the opportunity and the upside, but you don't talk about, yeah, I'm not making any money yet and I'm a druggie, but here's a, here's a marketing plan that I want you to, you know, be interested in because that message wouldn't go over very well. Um, so those kinds of rags to riches stories and, you know, personal problems are not told until you're at the very high level. And then you can do it we get for it. a couple of reasons. You can, you can uh, encourage people to have those problems to stick in there. And, and also the subliminal message is, well, look, what, look what, what kind of a mess I was. So what excuse do you have for not succeeding in Amway? You know, that's the other message that's being given when they talk about their rags to riches story. Um, you know, if, if I can do it, you can do it, that type of a message. Um, but that's, that's kind of the culture in Amway. Peter, I don't know what your input on that area is. There's, um, there's a couple of things. There's, there's many ways to build a business and many approaches that people could use. Um, because I was always a leader, um, wherever I went, right? Remember, cream always rises to the top, and that's, you know, my previous background. So cock. Remember, I was a leader, and cream always rises to the top, and then he goes back to you, Scott, and Scott goes, remember, I'm six foot five, almost six foot six, and a big, strong man, and I would break a horse if I went. <laughs> Came from a situation where I was <sighs> above average in my knowledge and a whole bunch of other things. I would many times have no problem telling my story, blending in with the company story, and then... I know the rules of engagement are unrealistic, Gabby. Well, I'm open to a negotiation, too. We can, we can change it. Well, how that was a benefit to get started, because there was a benefit of working with me um, at my level that I was at. But then again, what would happen if I weren't at the experience level that I was at? Would my personal story be as enhancing to the overall opportunity? I'm not so sure. So there might be some times when you want to and there's some times when you don't want to. I personally think that you should tell your story and have it um, balanced um, in the approach. So it should be like my story, um, why, this, why this company, and then you know the things about the company, and how I can help you with where I am right now. So if you have the, your personal story, I would have no... His story, he flunked out of pre-med and then went on to sell vacuum cleaners and now runs a leads scam. Oh, hired, a, hired and fired himself from Amway three different times and now runs a leads, leads scam. Problem. And I think you would feel more comfortable telling people a little bit about your story. You know, this is where I was. Here's where I'm working now. You know, looking for people that understand that are going to be helping me on that journey. And that's, that's spoken with strength as opposed to a weakness. You're not making any excuses. You're stating the facts the way they are. They're going to find out anyway. Um, and I think it's always better to handle that stuff straight up front. So I wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be hesitant in telling your story knowing that some people might be put off by your story. Um, and that would be okay. Yeah, I, uh, I just, yeah, I think from my own experiences, I um, draws to like uh, network marketing or on all major platforms. It's called it was something I wanted to be able to share my score um, that we we haven't even talked about. That does one. There's a lot of people that are uplines that give really shitty advice. <laughs> they like, really do. They, re they really agreed. suck. Like they have to come up with an answer for everything, and um, unfortunately, they don't have the level of experience, and some of them really just suck. And I find that um, sometimes it's that weird cult-like behavior that gives you the weirdest answers. Um, one other thing that I didn't want to skip before we end our 
uh, radio show, is you mentioned the name of your podcast, but you said it so yeah. fast, anybody that wanted to write it down would never be Sorry. able to write it down. So could, could you say it slowly? For sure. It's called Voice of Struggle Podcast, and it's on YouTube um, and any major streaming uh, platform, so Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, anything like that. Yes. Yes, it's Perfect. a purple logo. I don't know how you were, you're going to like it or whatever, but if you want a guest page, we can give you a guest page on Building Fortunes Radio, and then when people go to buildingfortunesradio.com, they'll be able to see anything that you post up there as well. So these stay up there forever. So somebody sure. might listen to this tomorrow or five years from now, and they might be able to see different and various things that you have going on. I promise you no one will listen to this, Scott and Peter. I appreciate yeah, that. that would be great, especially if there's anybody in uh, the area that I'm I can't in. wait till he posts it on BFR and then charges, sends Eliza an invoice for it. And my, I run a traditional business as well, making crafts and stuff. So I do in-person markets. So if anybody's in like the Toronto area, and me, um, <laughs> no, me and my mom make crafts. Well, Eliza, do you have your name on there? Like the first name, Eliza? Scared women and particularly the scared men. Um, what the fuck? Are women- here we go. With Eliza Scott, as well. let's Scott finish it Scott off. I'll let you wrap it up, and then we'll give the last words to Eliza. Sounds great. Yeah, um, I'll just give out my uh, Facebook page again. It's uh, facebook.com slash Johnson S-C-O-T-T-E-X-J-O-H-N-S-O-N, all one word. And Eliza, thanks for coming back. I hope all of... If the color gray was a radio show. The uh, scared women, and particularly the scared men, um, are willing to come on this show, and we're going to de-goon Marco one goon at a time. So back <laughs> to you, uh, Eliza. Well, yeah, he'll title the Eliza page ex drug addict. So true. Not him offering her a spot. No, about uh, about de-gooning. That's that's up to everyone else. But uh, I do hope that others decide to come on if they want to share their experiences and come ch- chat with you guys. Um, but thank you again for having me on for both these episodes. I really do appreciate it. Um, and just being willing to talk to me. Um, I think uh, I think these were some great conversations. I and, don't. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I just thank you guys. Well, you're welcome. Okay, good. Well, we're going to catch everybody next week on Building Fortunes Radio. And I think next week, Scott, after um, this radio show is Mother's Day. So for all those people that have moms, celebrate moms, or are moms, or whatever moms, um, happy Mother's Day. If we miss- that won't stop them. That's not going to stop them from doing the show. See you uh, next week. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. You've been listening to Building Fortunes Radio on buildingfortunesradio.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for the designated Building Fortunes Radio segment. Well, we did pretty good with the bingo. I think that's more than half the board. 4, 8, 10, 12, 14 out of 25. So not bad. Not bad at all. I think it would have been a full card if if it had generated a few of the different options. Holy, another emergency alert. More, uh, more people being evacuated because of the fires. Damn. Crazy, crazy world. The degooning, you know? <laughs> Particularly the scared man that he did say that. Yep, he did say that. Um, rude, obnoxious fossils. Bye, Scott and Peter. Is Eliza a double agent? Um... Is there a way to see how many people actually listened to their show before they became the anti-Marco, the narco Mucha Bear show? I think uh, one of my goons in yesteryear used some site to figure out what their traffic was on the site, and it was like 10 people a month or something like that. So did Marco start the fire? Find out next week. No shit. <laughs> Julie, what up? The subtext of what Scott and Peter both say is pick me, choose me, love me. They are relevant and talk too much. So true. So true, frankly. Dude, how has Julie Anderson not been gifted a membership? She's one of the most active people, bro. Like, when people be gifting memberships, how has Julie not got one? That's okay. Julie's over there on the Patreon. But still, you know, somebody... We, eventually, we're going to get that whole chat green. Green like Christmas. And uh, it's going to be beautiful. So, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I talked a lot today. And... Um, Goodness gracious. I don't really have much more to for tonight. I know it's been quick so far, but don't worry. 
I'm going to try to get this WFG dude back on, uh, you know, he said he would do a debate and he hasn't pulled up. So I'm hoping that I can get him next week. He's been ghosting me and still posting stories. So wealth, uh, what's his name? Wealth guru or some shit on Instagram, you know? <sighs> yep. True meek. All right, y'all. Well, maybe I'll, yeah. Appreciate you guys. I will holla at you another time. Another great episode of the always stupid gay, sometimes smart Marco. Yeah, so true. Did I get my cowboy hat? I did not. Today was Saturday. Everywhere was crazy. So, But I will have it for Wednesday. That's my goal. I'll get the cowboy hat. All right, y'all. Amelia, welcome to Executive Team Leader. Yes. Higdon, you got called out. Oh, I got to go watch that on Julie's channel. Y'all subscribe to Julie Anderson if you have not yet. There's a video with me on. There's a stream with me on her channel that uh, you guys will like if you like watching this stream. Appreciate you, Julie. I'm going to look up that Higdon, you video on your channel right now. Julie has a whole series reacting to the rank makers, like breaking down Ray Higdon, his reality show, his uh, his videos. It's pretty, it's pretty precise, the videos. Like, she is has the most content about Ray Higdon compared to anyone on the internet. That's for her damn. Aside from Ray Higdon himself, that's for sure. So, appreciate y'all. Uh, don't do drugs. Green Indian, go on building fortunes next week. Yep. I'll, I'll prove that one as well. I'll pre-approve uh, Green Indian if she wants to go on there. <laughs> Darman, yeah. Obama, I didn't hit that yet. Obama, you're wrong. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. I definitely need the rest between now and Wednesday. It's been a lot, a lot, a lot these past few days. Definitely go watch the stream from last night if you haven't seen it. That was a lot of that was a lot of fun. And uh, shout out to Eliza. Shout out to all you guys. Shout out to Scott and Peter. Marco, let's go. Do you like me? <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. All right, you guys, appreciate it. Peace out. I'll see you on the morrow. Well, not literally, but on the flip. Peace. It must be me, says Julie has that contact. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace out, y'all. Peace up. A town down. Bim, 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 bim. Yeah, yeah. Bim, 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 bim. Lil John. All right, peace.